Here in this video, we would like to talk about the direction of current in a Wheatstone bridge. In which direction current flows in the galvanometer when the bridge is in a balanced state and when the bridge is not in a balanced state. That's the thing that we want to discuss here. Before that, let me try to tell you once again, what do you mean by a Wheatstone bridge? We have made a detailed video of this. You can see that for a full video. I'm just having a basic look at here. Wheatstone bridge is a combination of Wheatstone bridge is a combination of four resistors connected this way between two junctions. You can have a galvanometer, and between the other two junctions, there is a battery. Now for the time being, let me just name these junctions as A, B, C and D. I want to know between the junctions B and D, between the junctions B and D that is this junction and this junction that is across the galvanometer, in which direction current flows in which direction current flows. So to make it little simpler, let me don't draw the galvanometer for a while. I will re uh, draw the galvanometer at a later stage, but I will simply draw an equivalent diagram of this without drawing a galvanometer. So this is junction A, junction B, junction C, between whom we have a resistances of P and Q. Again, this is also C, this is D, this is also A, this is the resistance R and S. So I have drawn a kind of an equivalent circuit without drawing a galvanometer. I assume that the bridge is in a balanced state for a while and I will tell you how does the current distribution happens. From the positive plate of a battery current I starts. From the positive plate of a battery current I starts, after reaching here current gets distributed as I1 and I2. This I1 continue further through the Q also, I2 continue further through the S also, at the junction both of them joins becomes I and comes back to the negative plate of the battery. Right. So now this P and Q are in series whose effective resistance is P plus Q. This R and this S R in series whose effective resistance is R plus S. The above and below combination of resistors are in parallel. So you can write resistance equivalent of the circuit is. I have discussed this in the previous video also. You can look at that. The upper part P plus Q is in parallel with lower part R and S. When resistors are in parallel R1 R2 by R1 plus R2 is the formula. This is the total resistance I have. Once you have the total resistance, you can say being this upper part and lower part are in parallel, the voltages are same to drop the total voltage because in parallel voltage is same. So you can write a formula that what we can write the total voltage V is the voltage across the upper part P plus Q. What's the formula for the total voltage? I can write IR. That is total I multiplied by total resistance. This is the total resistance. That is P plus Q into R plus S by P plus Q plus R plus S. That is I. Voltage across P plus Q. This part is I1. The resistance of that being P plus Q. This is P plus Q. So this P plus Q and this P plus Q will uh, get cancels. We got a formula for I1 now. I1 equal to I of R plus S by P plus Q plus R plus S. Once after getting this uh, I1, I can write a potential difference between these two points, these points. 
that is VA minus VB. What I can write? VA minus VB is between these two points. IR, I is I1, R is P between the two points is equal to I1 into P. But we have already calculated the value of this I1. I can substitute that. So VA minus VB is I1 of P means in the place of I1, you can write this value. That is this value. Total I of R plus S by P plus Q plus R plus S multiplied by P. That is VA minus VB. I can repeat the same way of doing it and find the potential difference between the points VA and VD. How can I do that? I can write a formula. Voltage total is equal to voltage across the second part R plus S. Total voltage is total I into total resistance of the circuit that is P plus Q and R plus S are in parallel. So, R1, R2 by R1 plus R2 equal to V across R plus S, this part is I2 into resistance of that, that is R plus S. This R plus S, this R plus S gets cancels. I got a value of I2 as I of P plus Q by P plus Q plus R plus S. I got I2 now. Now I can get the value of voltage difference between these two points VA minus VD as current through that is I2, resistance of that is R, I2 into R. So VA minus VD is, this is the value of I2, I of P plus Q by P plus Q plus R plus S into R. Now I know VA minus VD, I know VA minus VB, I will call that as equation number 1, VA minus VD as equation number 2. Let me make equation number 2 minus equation number 1. Equation number 2 means, now the LHS is VA minus VD minus, LHS of the first equation is minus VA minus of minus v will become plus vb that's on the left hand side on the right hand side second equation has to be taken first that's i of p plus q into r by p plus q plus r plus s minus the right hand side of the first equation that is i of this one r plus s and p by p plus q plus r plus s so VA and VA gets cancelled, this becomes VB minus VD I by P plus Q plus R plus S is in common. So what is the meaning? P plus Q of R minus R plus S of P. So VB minus VD is I by P plus Q plus R plus S of PR plus QR minus RP minus SP. So RP and PR gets cancelled. So the potential difference point between the points B and D as total current by summation of all the resistances multiplied by QR minus Yes. So, I want you to remind the diagram once again that how we have taken that four resistors. It is for this four resistors. This I am drawing, redraw the di redrawing the diagram. I want to show you how we have taken those resistors. See here. This is P, Q, R, S. Let me redraw the same. P, Q, R, S. This is the junction B, this is the junction D between whom we have connected a galvanometer. Between other two junctions we have a cell 
of EMFE and just redrawing the circuit. So between the junctions B and D, this is how the potential difference is there between this junction B and this junction D, right? It came in such a way that QR, look here, this is Q and this is R minus PS, this is P and S, this is the opposite resistors of the Wheatstone bridge. Now, if we have a condition in such a way that QR equal to PS, if these two are equal, then this entire right hand side becomes 0, that implies VB minus VD equal to 0, that implies VB equal to VD, that is the bridge is in a balanced state. So, for the bridge to be balanced, this is the condition. In the other way, I can just rearrange the terms as P by Q equal to R by S. This we have already derived in the other way. This is the other way of saying it, right? Now, let us imagine, let us consider a few more things. If the resistors are arranged in such a way that QR is greater than PS here, this entire RHS becomes a positive term that implies voltage across the B is greater than the voltage across the D. Current flows from junction B to junction D. If the other sense PS is greater than QR, then this term becomes a negative term, then VD becomes greater than VB current then flows from D junction to B junction. So, in a Wheatstone bridge in which in the galvanometer in which direction current flows? No current flows if this is the condition, current flows from B to D if this is the condition, current flows from D to B if this is the condition. This is all about the basic laws of current electricity, right? Thank you for uh, getting it.